Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Sunday, October 29, 2017. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and today we finally get back to the uh, induction heater and the, uh, the signature experiment that I, that I wanted to conduct involving non-Julian magnetostriction. So the last video that I published was on April 3rd of this year, and I confess, yeah, that is much too long between videos. A lot has happened from that time to now. Uh, I lost my job at Fox 61. I did not collect unemployment. I was uh, unemployed for less than two weeks. Uh, immediately found another job with a former employer and he was very happy to take me back. Now I'm back in the lab. Where we left off last was with the induction heater. At the, uh, at the point where we left off I was able to generate about 1500 watts with the set of capacitors that I had purchased for the induction coil and the tank circuit. 1500 watts turned out to be not quite enough to get the job done. So uh, now that I have the rest of the circuit finalized and know that it works, I was able to move forward and with the help of a couple of donations and the sale of some used used components that I that I moved on eBay, I was able to purchase one of these from Mauser Electronics. Uh, this is a competitor this is a Cornell Dublier, actually, uh, yeah, Cornell Dublier uh, purpose meant or purpose built capacitor for induction heaters. Uh, this would sell from Solem for about $350. I picked this one up from Mauser for $225. Big chunk of change right there, uh, but I absolutely needed this to complete the tank circuit. I will be making a new tank circuit with a tighter coil on it and a little bit longer. That tighter coil will accommodate these little ceramic um, banana boats, if you will. Um, this is what I will be uh, creating the alloy, the iron gallium alloy in, and uh, I'll have to do some, uh, some shaping inside here with ceramic powder that uh, and mold the interior to uh, create a point. The process, just to, just as a reminder, the process that I will be using was pioneered by Ames Laboratories. Ames Laboratories uh, pioneered the process of creating a crystalline metal structure by uh, very controlled cooling of a very specially shaped crucible so that at the very point, or at the very tip, the smallest tip of the crucible, uh, if you cool that slowly enough, what will happen is it will form the seed crystal necessary for the rest of the crucible or the rest of the rest of the molten material in the crucible to then solidify around the crystalline structure that formed at the very tip. Uh, that is a very lengthy process and it can take several hours to complete. Uh, so in that in that vein, I will be uh, using a stepper motor, a small stepper motor in an Arduino stepper, con stepper controller to slowly drag the, uh, the little banana boat crucible out of the induction heating coil and into a cool area where it will um, hopefully form this crystalline form that I need for the, for the alloy to exhibit the property that we want it to exhibit. I've completed the glove box. If, uh, if you look at these pictures here, you'll see that I've added some valves to the corners of the glove box. These valves are for the inlet of argon and for the uh, outlet of the oxygen so that I can 
uh, flood the box with argon and keep it flooded uh, and sealed with the gauntlet gloves. I've also completed the transfer chamber that uh, will be a part of the of the glove box assembly. The, the transfer chamber has two donut shaped flat surfaces that, that will act as the surfaces that these doors will seal against as I pump down the transfer chamber with a vacuum pump and then flood the vacuum chamber or the transfer chamber with argon so that I can transfer pieces in and out of the glove box without contaminating the interior of the glove box with additional oxygen. We've already talked about the induction heater upgrade and uh, in, order to, in order to keep this capacitor cool I purchased a quarter inch hunk, it's almost three pounds worth of copper plate. I'll be making a water-cooled manifold, cutting this copper plate in half and making a water-cooled manifold like you see in this picture here uh, so that the uh, the whole assembly can be kept cool with pumped water. With the sale of a bunch of the uh, stuff that I've moved on eBay and some pending, some pending equipment that I have, uh, I was also able to very recently order an argon tank, this, this argon tank right here, a argon regulator to regulate the flow of argon into the into the glove box, some Peltier thermal coolers that I will be mounting some heat sinks to and some fans, and the vacuum pump that will be necessary to evacuate the transfer chamber so that it can be flooded with argon and, and move pieces in and out of the glove box. So, uh, My wife asked me an interesting question the other day, and uh, I didn't have a good answer for her, so I decided to, to create a good answer for her. She asked me, how much have you spent on this project so far? And I uh, thought, hmm, you know, I don't really know the answer to that question. So I, uh, just this afternoon, I went back and looked at all my purchase orders and all the stuff I've ordered on eBay and bought from Home Depot and, and all, the, all the parts combined, not including what I've contributed to it in parts that I've had laying around, I have so far invested $872 into this project. So if the spirit moves you and you want to help me defray some of those costs, I could really use, I could really use that. Um, I appreciate the help that I've received. Some of you have been very generous. In fact, uh, one person was so generous, it contributed to uh, a very large chunk of the purchase of this capacitor. So to that person, I say thank you. Um, and... Uh, to, the, to that end of uh, recouping some of the monies that I've spent, I will also be auctioning off this, um, this tank circuit, the original tank circuit that I made for the first induction heater. It has a two inch copper pipe coil with the inlet and outlet fittings for the water cooling and the tank capacitor bank. It is good for 1500 watts. You can have a lot of fun with this. The only problem is, it wasn't quite enough for me to create the molten metal state that I need to maintain uh, for the uh, little manufacturing process that I'll be building inside of this glove box right here. So this, this will essentially be a manufacturing facility inside a small, small enclosure. The Peltier heat exchanger will either go on the left hand side or across the top uh, at, the, at the very back and uh, the induction heater will enter through the bottom towards the center just the coil and um, yeah so it's a very complicated project it's still going to take me a while but uh, we are moving forward and uh, i want to thank everyone who has helped for their help appeal to anyone who would like to help to do so and uh, we will we together we will reach the goal uh, of course the goal is limitless energy and uh, I think this, this, is, this is the one experiment, the signature experiment, that I think stands the very best chance of that. Uh, but anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone.
Wow. That one came out perfect. <laughs>